It's one of the oldest creatures on Earth. So old, it's called a living fossil. Soon, it may be only a fossil. Yet one of the world's most endangered animals is also evolution's greatest success story. A story that begins far from Africa in the day of the dinosaurs. In the flatlands of Nebraska lies a layer of volcanic ash covering a thousand square miles. Yet there are no volcanoes in Nebraska. The ash came from Idaho, a thousand miles away, ten million years ago. Lava was spewed for miles around, but worse than the blast was the fallout. A deadly cloud of ash floated over the land, then it began to fall. In some places, several inches accumulated, in others, ten feet. was suddenly frozen in a time capsule of gray ash. Ten million years later, the time capsule was opened. In 1978, Mike Voorhees of Nebraska University was prospecting for fossils in the ash beds of Verdigree Creek in eastern Nebraska. At the end of a fruitless day of searching, he looked up from the bottom of the creek bed and saw something on the bank. Against the gray ash, it gleamed white, like bone. I came across a ravine that led to a volcanic ash bed perched high up on the wall. And I crawled up and saw, to my surprise, uh, lower jaw of a baby rhinoceros sticking out of the bottom of this volcanic ash bed. I could see the tips of the upper teeth and figured that there was probably an entire skull there. There was, and not only a skull, but an entire skeleton. Mike would soon learn that it was the find of a lifetime. Ecstatic, he dug deeper into the ash and found hundreds of rhinos. After three decades of digging at Ashfall, his crew has uncovered a whole menagerie of ancient creatures. I'm standing at the bottom of what was a water hole 10 million years ago, which got filled with volcanic ash from a distant volcano and snuffed out the lives of of hundreds of animals, including the rhinoceroses that we see in front of us here. Each of these skeletons tells a story of, of life and death on the North American savanna. One of the strangest creatures uncovered at Ashfall turned out to be the last of its kind, an entire race of rhinos that once lived in North America. Ashfall was later nicknamed Rhino Pompeii after the ancient Roman city whose inhabitants were also wiped out by a volcano. Like them, these creatures lay preserved under a death mask of ash. Over time, rivers and rainfall have carved out hills and valleys here, yet the layer of ash extends evenly through the landscape. Mike Voorhees concluded that 10 million years ago, the land was flat and open. Across this savanna, 
roamed creatures now seen in Africa. Unlike their modern counterparts, ancient rhinos wandered in herds and congregated around water holes, like ashfall. After the volcano erupted, a huge cloud made up of trillions of specks of ash covered the land. Each tiny speck was deadly. Its edges were serrated like a knife and just as sharp. When the animals around the waterhole inhaled the ash, it lacerated their lungs. Slowly, they were cut to pieces from inside, then covered up. As ashfall was excavated, the details of the disaster emerged. Then, so did another tragedy. This is an especially touching association because we have a, a very young baby rhinoceros that had barely started eating solid food. It was probably less than a month old when it died. Uh, next to it is this adult female, almost certainly its mother. We know it's a female because it has a small tooth or tusk at the front of the lower jaw. And adult females like this either have a baby inside them or next to them. So it's uh, really quite a tragedy to, to think of uh, uh, literally hundreds of, of these animals uh, dying a pretty agonizing death from lung failure caused by a volcano a thousand miles away. Yet the rhino turned out to be a survivor. Volcanoes, droughts, ice ages, rhinos have taken everything nature threw at them and come back for more. Most species die out within 10 million years, not the rhino.